Hey guys, Brian here, Brad Guy Garage. And uh, some of you who uh, may have watched my first episode of my 73 Camaro series may have saw this engine. And unfortunately, it's got to get rebuilt again. Wipe the cam. So, a few of you guys might recognize this engine from my last video, which is actually my only video on the 73 Camaro series. I really got to get back to that. I pretty much just started chugging away and throwing her back together because, quite frankly, I miss driving her. Uh, so I really didn't bring the, the camera with me. But I'm going to do a video, kind of catch you up to speed and show you what I've done so far and how she's sitting. But I'm, I'm really happy with how she turned out. So I'm not going to get too close. I got some stuff to show you guys. For right now, the main focus is going to be the engine. As I said, I unfortunately wiped a cam. And uh, the main reason for that, short answer, parts quality. Uh, just a real quick note for you guys. If you're thinking of going flat tap it, do your research. Don't just uh, go on Summiter Jags and think like, ooh, I've seen this name a whole bunch of times and heard a whole bunch of guys say that they're the best and I've seen their commercials and all their advertising. Nope. Do your research because that's pretty much what I did and thought, oh, these are pretty, uh, pretty good company that I've heard a lot and seen some nasty cars running on these cams. And went with that and uh, here I am, wipe cam. So, main thing you guys are going to want to look for when you do the research for these cams, check out what kind of core they're grinding the cams on, because some are really just cheap cores that aren't going to last. It's not like back in the day. Uh, and definitely look out for what lifters they use, because in my case, even though this is a, an American cam manufacturer... They don't really manufacture much of anything that comes in the kit. And those lifters, I can tell you, are not made in America. And they are really not the preferred lifter that you want in here. So do your research. Don't end up in this position. I had this thing in running, even driving a bit. And uh, it's all got to come back out. So with a wipe cam, we're really only left with one correct option and that's to take this whole thing down to a bare block and pretty much start over um when you wipe that cam that lobe just starts resizing itself and all the material that comes off of it just gets circulated through your whole engine um in my case it made it past my filter to the bearings and that's pretty much when you know it's all got to come apart um see if I can actually show you here I got the pan off and mostly wiped down already but uh, whoop, get that over there but man it was it was pretty bad what was in here it wasn't a ton but it was enough to be concerning yep here you go pretty much had sludge on the bottom of the pan and I don't know if the light is hitting that well enough for you guys to see through the camera but it's shiny it is dark and it's shiny. There's metal in there. And at that point, you know, some people say take the cam out and lifters and just do a cam swap. Nope. Nope, we're not going to do that. This has been pumping past everything in there. So if I want this to last and have this be a reliable flat tap it setup like what was in there for the last almost 30 years, I'm going to try and do this the right way. So, as you can see, I already have some of the top end disassembled here, and that was from uh, a year ago. Yeah, that was that was about a year ago that I wiped this. Uh, I started pulling things apart, trying to figure out what was going on, because basically uh, it just started coming out of lash, and no matter how many times I would relash it, it just kept coming back out. And that was pretty much just the cam lobes just wearing away and resizing themselves, and giving me that much more clearance in the valve train. 
And then it got to a point where it started backfiring through the carb and valve train noise and all sorts of stuff. So I had taken this off and used a bore scope to look down at the cam lobes as well as the lifters. And that's pretty much when I realized that uh, I was in trouble. So this head push rods are already out and uh, <laughs> some of the lifters just laying around. Uh, rock arms are all loosened. So we'll move over to this bank. We'll get these push rods out, get the, uh, the heads off. We'll get everything off the front end, flip it over, and just uh, start taking everything out, getting it down to a bare block. Um, fortunately, I don't need to go as crazy in depth as I did the first time I built this because I already checked all my clearances. I've already measured everything, and uh, I know that everything is within spec and good to go. So this isn't going to be a how to rebuild your engine video kind of just going to take you guys through uh, what I'm going to be dealing with with this one, and they'll move on to some other things with the car. But, uh, all right. I think that about brings you up to speed on the engine side of things. So let's start taking her apart.
seven and a quarter. So you just watched me measure the oil pickup height from the rail to the pickup screen, and I use a flat edge, uh, flat edge, I use a straight edge to make sure I get that measurement right and I can reproduce it because uh, at the very least I'm going to need to completely disassemble this oil pump, if not replace it entirely because all of that wiped cam material that was going through the block was being pumped through this oil pump. Um, so I'm gonna have to disassemble it and take a look at the gears and see what kind of damage it did. So I'm just going to break the peaceful silence here for a moment just to uh, mention a couple notes about the main caps. Uh, when the block is machined at the factory, it's machined with these main caps. And what that means is that each main cap is machined to specifically fit the position on the block that it was removed from. So you cannot mix these up. You can't take the main cap that was first and towards the front of the block and put it in the position of number four. You can't put four in number three and so on. They need to go back exactly where they were removed from. So in my case here, I've taken a few precautions as well as some notes 
that will work for me in my block just to make sure that I put these back in the same spot they were removed from. Uh, first and foremost, I made this crude cardboard organizer here with everything just numbered front to rear and, and one through five. Uh, additionally, I clean these first so I can write on them with Sharpie. Again, one through five. And lastly, in my case here, each main cap has a stamping on it and the stamping number is different across each main cap. So while they were still installed, I took pictures of each main cap showing those stamping numbers, as well as noting their respective position on the block, one through five and so on. So definitely crucial that these go back in the same spot. Not only do they need to go back in the same position they were removed from, but they need to be oriented the, the proper way. They need to face a certain way. And that's really easy. If we take a look here at the number one main cap, uh, you'll see here that there's an arrow and the arrow points towards the front of the motor. Take a look here at number two. You can see the arrow there pointing forwards. Three, arrow, four, arrow. And for the rear main cap back here, this on my block, which is a late, 80s one piece rear main seal block this only fits on one way so you can't really mess this up so just a few things to keep in mind and take note of before you disassemble this quick tip here, something to take note of. Watch how I take this bearing cap off. I'm gonna flip it. If we take a look down here, you can see there's a tang there for the bearing. Now remember this was upside down like this. So that tang was facing outwards towards his oil pan rail. And that is the correct orientation. And it's important to remember that for assembly, both on the cap and on the connecting rod. The tangs will both face outwards towards the oil pan rail. Additionally, if you look here, you can see this side of the cap has a chamfer. It's not flat. And if we look at this side, it's ground flat. The flat side rides against the adjacent connecting rod. So the flat sides both ride together. The chamfered side will ride, where am I? Will ride here against the crank. So just remember that for assembly.
right, now where were we? Get this plug out now. Too, huh? size. So I'm about ready to be done with these block plugs after all that. There's one left on the top of the block here. This is the hole for your oil sending unit where that screws in. Uh, this, there's a passageway that goes in the back of the block here. This block plug gets tapped in from underneath in one of the holes in the rear main. So to tap this out, I have a quarter inch threaded rod. We're just gonna put that right into that passageway from the top and we'll knock it out the bottom. But before I do that, I'm gonna flip the block over and just measure the depth of that plug just so when I reinstall, I know that I'm in the right spot. I do believe there is a step in the passageway that catches the block plug to prevent you from hitting it in too far, but better safe than sorry.
All right, so that about wraps up my small block disassembly video. Uh, the only thing I didn't show you guys is removing the core plugs or freeze plugs. Uh, and that's because last time I took the engine apart, I knocked these out and I cleaned out the coolant passageways extremely well. So that's not my focus here. The reason I tore this block down again was because I wiped that cam. So my main focus is going to be oil contamination and removing any metal particles that might still be in the passageways or inside the block. So up next, I'm going to be just running a flex hone real quick through the cylinders again, just to clean them up. I already still see my cross hatching is still there from last time that I did it, but I just want to clean them up real quickly. Uh, and using the flex hone makes a mess. So I'll do that before I clean. And then after the flex hone is done, I'm going to clean the entire block and you really cannot clean an engine block enough guys i can't stress that enough um this block is already pretty clean aside from you know the obvious uh metal particle issue but i really don't have a lot of build up or gunk or anything like that some of you that have a really old really beat up dirty block might want to go get it hot tanked it will save you some time but it's not necessary you can take the time and actually sit there and scrub everything yourself but it's tedious and it might take a while um, so I'm going to be using a bunch of brushes and hot soapy water. Rifle brushes work really well because you can just screw the extension onto the end of the brush and that helps you get into the real deep passageways and areas of the block, make sure everything's clean. So I'm talking, I'm probably going to do the scrub, rinse, repeat three, four times until I'm satisfied that I know that everything's nice and clean and there's no metal or anything left in this block. So I'm really going to be spending a lot of time on the cleaning process. But anyway, guys, I hope that shows you how simple it is to disassemble a small block. Uh, it really isn't that difficult. It gets more tedious during the reassembly process and checking the parts that you bought and that you're going to install because you've got to do a lot of measurements and stuff like that. But there are really, really good books out there and a ton of good videos that'll help you along your way with that. I'm not gonna be taking any videos of those processes because I've already done all that on this block. I know that my clearances are good and, and all that stuff because I've taken all those measurements already. Unfortunately, here I just had a case of a bad cam. I'm very happy that the engine is finally completely broken down and I can move on to the next step to getting this car running again and back on the road. So stay tuned for more videos. I hope you guys learned a thing or two and enjoyed it. And thank you for tuning in to Bra Guy Garage. I hope you guys have a great day.